Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be talking about this trick in order to use the YouTube original resolution option in order to get the highest maximum quality out of your videos. Now, let me first preface this by saying that this option basically only allows you to increase only the maximum quality. It does not increase the, the quality of every resolution available for your viewers. So this is only a trick for just the original resolution option. So for a long time, YouTube only let us upload in 1080p and watch in 1080p. Well, you could actually upload in higher resolutions, but they'd be scaled down to 1080p. However, uh, a few years ago, YouTube uh, introduced the option to actually watch 4K content on YouTube. Now, this wasn't really all that useful considering the bitrate was actually still quite low. It was only two or three times the bitrate of 1080p. But 4K, especially the version they were introducing, uh, is like four times the uh, information of 1080p. So they allowed people to actually stream, I think it was 4096 by 3720 or something like that. It's a four by three resolution. But then they got rid of that about a year and a half ago or so. They actually dropped it to 2K. So you can upload a video in 4K and it would be downscaled to 2048 by 1152. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, you'd think YouTube would have fixed the bitrate, right? It would, it would drop down to what would be proportional for 1080p, right? Because 2048 by 1152 is only about five or six percent higher resolution than 1080p. So you'd think the bitrate might be five percent higher, maybe a little bit more. But you'd be wrong. YouTube seems like they never actually changed the bitrate. And so let me show you. I uh, did some tests today and yesterday, and I have two files here. These are the same exact file. Or what I did was I recorded 60 seconds of Skyrim at 30 frames per second in 1080p. Then I exported a 1080p version. It was something crazy high bit rate, something like 50 or 60 megabits per second. And then an 1152p version. And then I upload that. So these were separate files. And so on the left, we see the 1080p version. This is the version that came from YouTube. I uploaded it, let it process, and then I downloaded it again in order to analyze it. And we'll actually see some side-by-side -side comparisons. So the 1080p version had an overall bitrate of about 6200 kilobits per second, but that includes audio. If we go down to video, we can see here that the average bitrate of the 1080p version was just under 6 megabits per second, right around 6 megabits per second, with a maximum bitrate of about 8200 kilobits per second. For the 1152p version, we are over double that at 16.8 megabits per second and the maximum bit rate of just over 22 megabits per second. So you increase the resolution of perhaps by, by maybe five or 6% and you get over twice the bandwidth support in this case. Absolutely incredible difference. And I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm blown away that this trick actually works. I was very skeptical about this. I thought it was simply people complaining that they weren't satisfied that their video, that their 1080p videos at seven megabits per second somehow didn't look good. So the interesting thing is, is that audio is exactly identical. 192 kilobits per second, maximum of 202, 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit. So let us minimize these and we'll actually start looking at the footage side by side and uh, to get an idea. So on the bottom track here is actually the original uncompressed footage. Uh, on the second track here, we have the 1152 P version and on the top version we have the 1080p and I'm this is a 1080p project so the 2048 by 1152 image is being scaled down back again so what are we looking for here well because this is a moving image if we actually play this this is a moving image and it's playing a look com way compressed on the video itself but and you can see some glitches in the, the area this is a s slightly mod slightly modded um, Skyrim. It's not 100% vanilla. But anyways, as we're running through, YouTube and the encoder is having to compress images, especially these really complex areas such as the grass, as they're moving by. And this is because it's visually complex, there's a lot of different shapes in it. It becomes difficult to retain the quality as well as not take forever in encoding it. If you increase the efficiency of the codec, it could obviously still, um, it could do a better job of using the same amount of bits to, uh, 
re retain a lot of the original quality. But let's um, let's find an area with a lot of grass we're removing. This is probably a good spot here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my project and go to 3840 by let's say 2160, and it'll be zoomed in here. So this is scaled up basically twice. So it's it's a kind of a clean upscale. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the 1152 version, and you'll definitely notice it's softened up here. So you can see it's definitely softer. You may think, oh, this looks horrible. However, this is a 200% zoom effectively. And if we go through the world again, you can see just how much stuff you lose. Because again, this is the image right now is lossless. It's basically an uncompressed image. Um, there isn't even any chroma subsampling. This is RGB. And if we turn it back on, you can see just how much information is lost when you're trying to do really quick encoding in order to, for it to be streamable um, on you know, many devices. Now, however, let's go to 1080p. So again, this uh, 1152 version is at roughly 17 megabits per second. Let's see what six megabits per second does. It just becomes a few colors. There's, you, there's nothing here besides the rocks. If we switch back, you can just see how big of a difference there is. Now, you may think, oh, well, the 1152 version still is pretty horrible. But let's go to a different area here. The, the ground is just like four or five colors. It's just so splotchy. You can't even really make out the detail in the rocks. The tree just becomes a blur. This post has no texture to it. The grass is just a, a mush of colors. And you actually can't even really make out much of the detail on his cloak. But if we go to the 1152 version, we see way more detail. I want to go to some other areas here. I think uh, let's go a few frames forward here. If you look on the left here, you can definitely see 1080p. First of all, the shadows are one color. <laughs> the grass over on this side is just so mushy. The tree is blending in with the water. And let's turn off 1080p. There we go. Um, now you can see it's actually grass. The tree is defined more. The shadows seem to have some interesting detail to it. The ground looks like ground instead of just brown um you can actually see there's a definite you know division between the road and the grass before it was just kind of where exactly does the grass end um now again this is not going to change if you if you encode this certain way this is not going to change your 1080p quality not really youtube's still going to encode it the same way however it seems that youtube never dropped the bitrate of the 2k option so it looks like you're still getting, quote unquote, the 4K uh, allocated bandwidth. And you just see here the, the detail on the grass and the tree and the rocks. Just so much is released kind of with that extra bandwidth. So the point of this is, is that people who want to see this better quality still have to watch it in original. However, it looks significantly better. It's unreal how much clearer it looks um, when you're actually watching it in original now another point to make people who are who are who are on a 1080p screen will be fine watching this in original version even though you're looking at a 2048 by 1152 version of the video it came from 1080p and their media player is going to go back to 1080p so really i would not worry about any sort of aliasing problems and this is a point i think i made on twitter is that the benefit you get from over twice the bitrate is way higher than the downside of some aliasing and resizing problems. In fact, the aliasing problems are basically gone simply due to the fact that your image is so compressed, you don't really have to worry about it. I mean, look at the distance here. There's just nothing out there in the distance. And then you can see, oh, wow, there's actually three or four trees here instead of just one mosh of it. And the, and the ground cover here is just... I'm blown away because, I, again, I was very skeptical about this fix here and just so, so massive of a difference. Anyways, enough with that. Let's actually look at how we can actually um, do this. So it's actually extremely simple. Let me bring in my separate project here, but it's a size. So this is the same uh, video here. This is 1080p project. Actually, it's I did this tutorial before. So. Uh, Let's go back here. 
So let's say you have a video, it's 1080p, and you want to do this trick. All you have to do is take your project, set your project to 2048. Let's actually do 2048 by 1152. In fact, you don't even have to do it in the project. If you're decently competent with Vegas, you know that the output, the output uh, settings basically override your project. So I set uh, it here, and you'll see it upscales. But that's not, you don't really need to do that. Here's what really matters. Like I said, it overrides. So if you were to compress this with, um, let's see, main concept perhaps. Again, this is not about encoding, so I'm just going to choose the 1080p preset. And I'll make sure my frame rates match. Again, frame rates matter. I'll just set profile to high. And I'm going to go to custom frame size. And I'm going to type in 2048 by 1152. And then set your bit rate to whatever you want. I would probably, I'd probably double that. And bring that to 30. That's my personal choice. Um, and that's it. Just as long as the resolution is 2048 by 1152, it's going to go into YouTube and it's going to say, oh, this is a 2K video file. We have to encode this properly. And it's going to set it up um, on your new original setting. So again, to actually take advantage of this as a viewer, you have to watch the video under the original option. And again, you don't need a higher resolution screen. A 1080p screen will do fine. Even, even a 720p screen would probably benefit. So if you have a 720p screen or a 768 screen, like a 1366 by 768 screen or 1280 by 768, you could still benefit from this in a way because uh, normally you'd watch a video maybe in 720p, uh, but it's only working with maybe four megabits per second. But then if you have a, a 2048 by 1152 file, at 17 megabits per second, you can still see that benefit. A, if it was shot in 1080p or uh, 1152, you'd get a downsampling option as well because you're getting more detail. But at the same time, you'd have way more bandwidth and you'd probably see way more details because the way YouTube seems to work is everything up to 1080p is proportionally encoded. So 360p maybe has two megabits per second, 480p has three megabits per second, uh, 720p has maybe four or five megabits per second, 1080p has six megabits per second. However, once you hit 2K, you have twice that. So it's a huge jump in quality that is really great to uh, to work with. So really that's all this video is about. I think I went on for too long, but I'll definitely have to edit it down. However, um, really great fix and I'm probably going to continue to use this for quite a while certainly on my cinematics but definitely for my tutorials because they sharpness is really beneficial in that case but uh, I'm loving this assuming YouTube doesn't fix it for a while which I'm sure they will if a lot of us use it so maybe it's not such a good idea that I did this video anyways thanks for watching and if you uh, found it useful please subscribe I try to do tutorials every now and again for various sorts of things. I don't want to try to do the obvious ones. Like I said, encoding is a big deal. It's not simply here are the best settings. Have at it. Anyways, that is all. Thanks for watching, and I will see you back soon, perhaps. See you later.